Here's part two. Now, to be honest with you, there's actually going to be a lot of things that are exactly the same, and I'll go over why here in a moment. But this is using P implies Q, so we have a more verbose statement that we're given here. We're still going to assume, but be careful, it's P is still true and negated Q is true in your overall hypothesis. And now we're going to go to the contradiction. We're going to, we're going to show that negated Q just cannot be true, and therefore it has to be P implies your negated, sorry, or negated of a negation called a contradiction. Wow. Our original Q that was true is your conclusion. Now, how does this work out? Is actually using the original clause of where we had a single P. Now, what I've done is, is all I've done is swapped out R subbed in for the P that we had a couple of slides back. That's all we're doing. So it's exactly the same setup as what we had before. Yes, it's still the same setup where we have, hey, I can't have both R's, a negated R and a regular R, both be true or both be false. I can't do that. One's got to be the other way around because one's negated. So that situation is still the same. The only thing that's different is the R. Now, why the heck did I do that? Is honestly to prove that I can use the exact same overall setup using an R and more of a complex statement in order to get to what we want. And also, frankly, break it down to say, hey, I can use an and in order to make sure that we're in good shape with this as well. So now how do we do that? Well, we're going to have R equals, and remember, this side was just P, but I've replaced that here with our P implies Q. So that's our original proof by contradiction with R. So we're, we're, so we're assuming the negation of R, which is coming up next. That's how we're doing our negation here with contradiction. And we know how to negate this from our previous experience. We've done that before. But I'm not done yet because this would still suck. So now with this setup that I've got right here, I can use our logical equivalence to go ahead and break that down from an implication to using some type of connectives, which in this case happens to be an or. But we have our negation here. There's nothing wrong with that because now using De Morgan's, I can go ahead and eliminate the parentheses and move our negations. And when we do De Morgan's, remember, we flip the sign. So now we have a P and a negated Q, which frankly, by the way, looks exactly like what we had up here. And that's the beauty part of, hey, even though we had something that's a little bit more complex, the overall way of solving it is really not all that hard. And that's the beauty of this. So let's get to examples.